Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel I post a lot of anti-MLM content. As always, I'll link a playlist right here and in the description box below. That's my big anti-MLM playlist, over 100 videos on it at this point. And if any of that content sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, consider liking this video. All those things help to support my channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. Today, horror stories number 32 coming at you. I feel like I haven't taken the time to say this recently and so I want to reiterate again again, how appreciative I am that so many people have sent their horror story to me. Since I started making these videos 32 videos ago, I have received over 600 hundred horror stories, which is a completely baffling number to me. I never in a million years imagined that it would get to this volume when I started. And it's crazy to think that horror story videos weren't even on my radar when I started. This series only exists on my channel because somebody found my email one day and they sent me their story without me even asking for it. And from there, I mentioned in a video once I was like, hey, I got this story. If anyone else has some, send them my way. Maybe we can make this a thing. And that's just what's so shocking to me that it has gotten as big as it has. And I'm so thankful for you. I just think that's the coolest thing that there are people out there who are comfortable and confident sharing their very detailed and a lot of times really heartbreaking stories with me and allowing me to be able to share them on this kind of platform. I just wanted to say that because as I was kind of preparing for this video and I was looking at the number 32, I'm like, how did we get here? I just think it's the coolest thing. And obviously these videos would not exist if it wasn't for you. So from the bottom of my heart, a million times over, thank you. With that being said, I can never have too many horror stories. If you have one you would like to send to me, the instructions for how to do that are in the description box below. I've pulled a few for today's video, so let's get to reading. This story says, hey Hannah, my name is Isabel and you're free to use my name in this story. This might be pretty short and not as bad as some of your other horror stories. I figured I would share it since it deals with isogenics, which I don't hear a lot about on your channel. For a while, I didn't think I had any experiences with any MLM and business types, which is shocking because at 19 years old, usually you have some experience with at the very least a Monate or Young Living rep. It wasn't until I was watching an Illuminati video on Isogenics that I realized I have a lot of experience with an MLM. If you aren't aware, Isogenics is a nutrition and fitness MLM. I've been a figure skater since I was eight years old and with that comes a lot of nutrition, fitness, and health advice naturally. When I hit age 12, my weight was starting to fluctuate due to normal puberty related problems. But since I was a high level competitive athlete, my mom decided that she would see a nutritionist to get things back in check. Lucky for us, or unlucky, I suppose, there was a nutritionist based in our rink just upstairs. I'll call him Daniel for the purpose of this story. I worked with Daniel for about a year, having appointments once every two weeks. In these appointments, he would analyze anything I had tracked into my fitness pal, which if you're not familiar, this is a calorie counting app. He would have me run on a treadmill for about 20 minutes and he would check my weight. He would also highly push at my mother and I to buy isogenics through him, which we did. He encouraged me to eat the isoline bars every day for breakfast, and he also attempted to encourage the isoline shakes, but I found them absolutely disgusting and couldn't get them down. My mom decided that it was not worth the $53 cost for those. In the beginning, he told my mom that she should sign up to be a distributor for the discount, but she declined, knowing that she wasn't wanting to sell isogenics to anyone, thank God. I didn't realize at the time that he was just an MLM rep, of course. I was 12 and knew nothing about MLMs. I trusted his advice and did eventually get back down to the goal weight and my skating improved because of it. But when I think back on it now, I highly doubt he had any qualifications to be giving health and diet advice like he did to me. And he very much could have been leading me down a dangerous path with eating. I wouldn't have stopped seeing him had he not moved away. I don't know how many people he tricked into the business this way, but considering he only moved out because he had been able to buy a whole building for his practice, I assume it was a lot. In other news, there's a skating mother at the rink who keeps trying to get me to buy essential oils to cure my paralysis from nerve damage. Interesting reaction. Thank you for these videos, Hannah. It really means the world that you are willing to share with the world these horrible companies that victimize everyone involved with them. I hope one day MLMs cease to exist. This story screams predatory. Let's give this Daniel guy the benefit of the doubt, okay? Let's say he really was a nutritionist. Let's say he really did have some kind of credentials. That's how he kind of got 
this position and office within this skating rink maybe. I would hope to God that if there was gonna be a nutritionist kind of in-house for these young athletes that he would have some kind of background in that and that he would be qualified. But even if he was, incorporating Isogenics, incorporating an MLM company into it is still wrong. That's still unethical in my eyes. Because as you're mentioning in your story, he's trying to recruit your mom. He's trying to sell these products to parents and their young athletes under the premise that this is gonna make them healthier. It's gonna make them a better athlete. And I completely understand where you're coming from, where you're like, I'm 12 years old. I don't know what this is. And you're just kind of following the guidance of the people of authority in your life at that moment. You would hope, you would assume that the in-house nutritionist would have your best interest at heart. But unfortunately, what we know about MLMs is that they oftentimes don't. The motive is money. The motive is to sell you something or to recruit you. And the way I see it is that even if his intentions are good, even if his goal really is to help these young athletes with their nutrition, the moment that you bring an MLM into it, it completely discredits you. That's my opinion. That's how I feel about it. Because now all of a sudden, it's not just about helping people. It's not about just offering your knowledge and expertise. It's about making money. Money is the motive. That's just the way MLMs go. MLM reps try to frame it like, oh, this is just a selfless act. I'm helping people with their health and wellness or whatever, but it is not a selfless act. There is an ulterior motive and that is money. And in this scenario, it's to make money off of young athletes who are looking to improve their health and wellness and perform better in their sport. That would be categorized as a vulnerability and his behaviors would be categorized as preying on that vulnerability. So all of that to say, even if he was an actual nutritionist, selling isogenics to the skaters at this skating rink is extremely inappropriate and predatory behavior. This story says, hi Hannah, I found your channel a few months ago and wow, I just canceled my subscription with Young Living after watching a ton of your videos. Yes, yes, go girl, you know what's up. That kind of news will never get old. If I have played any role in anybody's experience of avoiding an MLM, getting out of an MLM, ceasing to continue buying products from an MLM, that makes my day. Thank you for telling me that. I was never an ambassador for any MLMs, thankfully, but like a lot of other people, I know a ton of ambassadors and have been to a ton of parties. I haven't had too many MLM horror stories, but this one I'm writing about takes the cake for my worst MLM horror story. P.S. Please keep me anonymous. About two to three years ago, a mom I knew growing up and who homeschooled with us started taking Plexus supplements. She claimed that they basically cured her of her pre-existing health conditions and that hashtag mama was bald and now she's not. She also lost a ton of weight, which is great, but she also did a huge lifestyle and diet change at the time of starting the products. I'm not sure if you know this, but your gut has a lot to do with your overall health and endocrine system. So when she started making claims that her thyroid problems were suddenly gone due to these supplements, I was intrigued because I had just found out about my thyroid problems at a young age, 18 or 19 years old, but I had never really inquired about the supplements until later. Something you briefly mentioned that I think is so important is you said she started taking these supplements while she also made a complete lifestyle change. And that is quite the common theme that I see throughout people who join all kinds of MLMs, okay? They're encouraged to have this like rags to riches sob story, my life sucked before and it's so wonderful now. And when it comes to these health and wellness MLMs, a lot of how they sell the product is through personal testimony. And here's how I was before, then I started taking the products and here's how they've improved my life. But coincidentally, a lot of those people also start eating better, drinking more water, getting more sleep, exercising regularly, <laughs> which are all great things. Love that for you. But how can one possibly say that it's just the supplements that are improving their life if you quite literally did an entire lifestyle overhaul in which the supplements were a small part of? I see this all the time. I just had to point that out. She was my brother's wedding photographer and offered to take my senior pictures in exchange for teaching her daughter's piano and voice lessons for a month or two. I agreed and we revisited the lessons later on. After the holidays, she offered to pay for my supplements in exchange for the lessons for her daughters again. I was for it since I wanted my thyroid levels to be normal and to possibly eventually go off of my thyroid medication. For the first month or two, she was paying me enough for me to order the supplements and would walk me through what I needed to do and how to order them. I tried to be as consistent as possible with the supplements because they said that's how you get the best results, but I wasn't seeing much, if any, results. I previously had an eating disorder, so I was hoping to lose a little weight, even though I seriously didn't need to. She said the pink drink would help me maintain the current weight I was 
was at since it was a healthy weight and I didn't need to gain or lose any weight. I also wasn't seeing any spectacular results in my TSH levels, and that was very disappointing. My mom, however, said that she does think my levels went down a bit when I was on the supplements, but looking back, they were never low enough to maintain at a certain dosage or to come off of the meds. After a little while, she stopped paying me, so I was left to pay for the products by myself and teach her daughters for free. I was still trying to be as consistent with the products as I could, while my mom was basically paying for the products for me. The pandemic happened, and I was still teaching her kids for a few months, but eventually had to stop because of the lockdowns. And I had just gotten engaged and was moving out of the state come the summer. I eventually canceled my account because I couldn't afford it since she stopped paying me months before. And I had stopped taking the products, so what was the point of continuing to purchase the products? She texted me saying how she noticed that I canceled my account and asked why. I told her that I couldn't afford it at the moment and maybe I'd revisit later. I had bags of their famous pink drink in my medicine cabinet for literally almost two years because I just eventually stopped drinking them. I threw all of them out maybe a month ago because I kept telling myself that maybe I'll start taking them again, but I never did and they sat there and expired. She also posts all over Facebook and everything she posts somehow has to tie into Plexus. She just recently made Diamond along with another lady who she's under and also used to homeschool with us. My brother and his wife were under her at some point trying to make enough money on Plexus so that my sister-in-law could stay home with her babies, but had to eventually stop buying the products and selling because it was becoming too much for them. I'm so sad they fell into that MLM trap with the claims of them being able to eventually make enough money for my sister-in-law to stay home. But mind you, it took this crazy Plexus lady almost three years to reach Diamond. Once the crazy Plexus lady reached Emerald, she settled for the lifestyle bonus instead of the Lexus and bought a huge four passenger van instead. Put a pause on that. This is something I believe is unique to Plexus, maybe a couple other MLMs. We're all familiar with the car programs, right? Arbonne, Monate, Plexus, all of them have this program where if you reach a certain rank, then you get this bonus to go towards a luxury car payment. But the catch is that you have to maintain your rank if you wanna get that bonus check. But the way that Plexus is a little bit different is instead there's two options. You can get the Plexus Lexus bonus if you want to, or you can get a lifestyle bonus. I did a whole deep dive video on Plexus previously, and if I'm remembering correctly, the lifestyle bonus was a smaller dollar amount, but there wasn't really any kind of like contract attached to it. And I remember saying in that video, like this would be the better way to go because you're not taking out a loan or a lease on a luxury vehicle and then depending on that money to be able to pay for it. The lifestyle bonus is quite literally a chunk of change you get just for being at your rank and you can spend it on whatever you want to. And if I'm being completely honest, that is a much better alternative than these car programs. Given the choice between the two, the lifestyle bonus is probably the way you should go. But I also remember saying in that deep dive video that you should never put that money towards something like bills. You should never be dependent on that money to actually pay for your cost of living expenses because just like the car bonus program, that money is not guaranteed. You only get it if you maintain your rank and you continue staying in the company. So for you to say that this person, instead of buying a Lexus, they just took the lifestyle cash and got a Ford passenger van instead, good for her for not going for a luxury vehicle that's extra hard to pay for, but still in my opinion, not a great financial decision because now you're still dependent on that money to go towards this new car you just bought. She also goes on all these expensive trips that they claim are all paid for by the company. One time I posted something for a friend doing it works because how do you say no to someone asking you to advertise on your Facebook when you don't really know the harm in MLMs yet? She messaged me saying how many comments I got on that post and if I ever wanted to sell Plexus that she highly suggests it because I would be great at it. Plus I could do it from home since I have a baby and I'm home with him all the time. I told her I wasn't interested right now as I had just had a baby and I was starting college up again soon. They also claim that you do not have to to be a salesperson, yet everything they post is about Plexus. My brother and sister-in-law got the inside scoop and said that those at Emerald and beyond are probably making a ton of money, but the Plexus lady's whole demeanor and personality changed after a certain rank, and she just isn't the same person we used to know. She is more into the glory and glam lifestyle now instead of the humble missionary person we used to know and love. Her oldest daughter, who is no more than 14 years old, is her assistant and does everything for her, including posting on her Instagram story. Stories. She claims all the young ones are going to be hashtag future diamonds or quote diamonds in the making. Not a mom grooming her children to become Plexus Hun. 
friends. Oh wow, that is really upsetting to me. I hate to break it to you, but by the time your daughter is ready to be a Plexus ambassador, this business opportunity is not gonna be a thing. It will not be as lucrative for that daughter as it was for her mom when she first joined. They brag about these products and their benefits so much that it's almost like it's their savior or their God. And they say they are Christians and we aren't supposed to have any idols or gods except the Lord himself. She's also recruited so many people I know and now it's like my Instagram feed is a Plexus themed app and it gets so annoying sometimes. I've learned to just scroll past their posts unless I'm nosy and want to snark on them. Sorry for the long email, although I know you don't like apologies for them. And thanks for taking the time to read my story. Thanks for all you do and leading me into the anti-MLM community. Yeah, your story too has this whole tone of like preying on young people. You were preyed on for your thyroid problems that you were concerned about and you were looking for some help with. These poor daughters that this woman has are most likely very heavily influenced by what their mom does. And this is kind of making me think about something I haven't considered, which is that the children of the people at the top of these MLMs probably have this incredibly skewed misunderstanding of what this industry is because all they see is that their mom is doing well or their dad or their dad. Their experience, what they know to be true is that their parent joined an MLM, made it to the top, goes on trips, buys new cars, got to stay home with them, has the funds for whatever kind of nice lifestyle they're living. And now it's kind of making me wonder, like, do you think that MLMs have the potential to be generational? For example, do you think that these girls are going to grow up and join their own MLMs? Because that's their example of success and hard work that they have been given. It's a very fascinating thing to think about because no doubt they're naive to the fact that these schemes don't work out for most people and that their parent was part of the top less than 1%. And the idea that those children might grow up and try to be successful in their own MLMs kind of breaks my heart. That's gonna be a really hard realization for them one day. And do you think that if they try to do an MLM and it doesn't work out, that then their mom is going to shame them for it? Like they didn't work hard enough, they didn't want it bad enough, they didn't do enough personal development. <laughs> like these are the things that keep me up at night. I know I'm spiraling on this crazy tangent. I'm just very fascinated by like child psychology, child development. And it's very interesting to kind of speculate the impact that this has on the children of people really high up in MLMs. Thank you for sending in this story. This is one of the things I love about these kinds of videos is that your stories get me thinking about things that I have never even considered before. This next horror story is the shortest one I have ever read on my channel, but just because it's a short story doesn't mean that it is lacking in the power of the message. This says, hi Hannah, I've never been in an MLM, but have been fascinated by the psychology of how people get victimized by the MLM industry and cults in general. Here is my horror story contribution. I work in finance for a Fortune 500 company. When I receive resumes that list MLM companies in the applicant's current work history, they automatically get declined. On paper, being in an MLM indicates that a person cannot accurately complete financial statements, calculate return on investment, or demonstrate critical thinking skills as related to finance. This may be harsh, but it is the reality even in our current job market. Moral of the story, stay away from MLMs, or at least do not list them on your resume. Thanks for all of your contributions. Can I give an award to the writer of this story? Should we have an award ceremony for the different categories of the best types of stories? This story would win the category of short, sweet, and powerful. And I am exploding inside, finally getting confirmation of this because this is something I've speculated before. I've talked about before how I don't think that people should be putting MLMs on their resume. Resume. And that's come up because in my MLM top fails videos, there will be MLM huns who were like, this is great job experience. It's sales experience. This is great for your resume. That's how they pitch it to college students. They're like, do this business opportunity to bulk up your experience on your resume. And I've always said, don't do that for all of these reasons. It's not a job. It's not job experience that does not qualify as work history. That is a money-making scheme that you will invested in and to some employers in some professional job settings, they'll take one look at that decision to be involved with that kind of money-making scheme and they will then discount your skills, your abilities, your character. And this is exactly what makes me sick to my stomach when I think about people that get stuck in MLMs for multiple years. And it is their only way that they're making money and they're dedicating all of their time to it because eventually when the MLM does crash and burn, when they're not being as successful as 
they previously have been, and they do need to go back out and find a real or typical or traditional job, they have nothing to show for the past few years of their life. From an employer standpoint, they want to know, what have you been up to in recent years? And if you say, oh, I've been in an MLM, to the employer, that's not legitimate. That is not work experience. That is a gap in your resume. That is a period of what they would consider to be unemployment. And I can feel myself getting really worked up and passionate about this topic because that's something that I know people don't consider. And I'm trying right now to like scream from the rooftops. MLMs are not a job. They're not work experience. Don't put them on your resume. Don't even waste your time doing them because the traditional workforce doesn't take it seriously. Anyway, I've been talking for like five times as long as it took me to read this story. I am just very passionate about this one specific topic because this can be so damaging to people's entire careers. We need to be addressing this more. And I thank you a million times over that you have personal experience in this. You are a credible source. Just please, for the love of God, don't join an MLM. And if you do, don't tell people about it on your resume. Thank you. This story right at the top, there's a trigger warning for pregnancy loss and eating disorders. And it says, I'm sorry, I already wrote to you once before, but I had an experience a while back that just broke my heart. I just saw your MLM Horror Stories 22 video and saw something that made me feel less alone. And I just wanted to share my own similar experience. This particular Horror Stories video, this is the most viewed video on my entire channel. The thumbnail is very intriguing. It features an incredibly horrendous story that made me really unexpectedly emotional. I'm not going to repeat that story here, but it sounds like you have something similar that happened to you, which I'm already just preparing myself for. And I'm just trying to put a smile on my face so that I don't cry this time. A little background on me. I'm going to say this right up front. I am fat. I struggled with anorexia as a preteen slash teen and nearly lost my first child when I was 28, possibly because I relapsed and struggled to eat enough to maintain the pregnancy. Luckily, an incredible midwife noticed something was wrong and early induction saved her life, though she did suffer some complications. Then, as I tried to raise a developmentally delayed toddler and cope with unexpected medical crises and then a pandemic, I went in the other direction. My past couple of years, I've been 25 to 30 pounds over my ideal healthy weight. I'm not proud of it, but I'm not ashamed of it either. This body has carried me through some serious crap and I'm doing my best here. Aren't we all? These past few years have been miserable for a lot of us. We're all just doing the best we can. I think that that's a really important sentiment to reiterate. I promise this is relevant. So since my daughter was born, I've had three pregnancies that didn't last. I am now pregnant again. I've poured all of my energy and focus into eating healthy, exercising enough, but not too much, and refusing to judge myself for weight gain. My doctor has told me my weight gain is exactly on track at every stage, and I'm trying to focus on that and not this big old baby belly. I was so paranoid I didn't tell my own parents about the pregnancy until 16 weeks. I didn't show much for a long time because, again, I've got extra pounds already. I finally had my anatomy scan and got the all clear and decided it was time to let my friends and extended family know, so I did. I posted a picture on Facebook of my daughter wearing a big sister shirt and me wearing a shirt with rainbow footprints on the belly. Then I got C immediately after and started having some complications. I spent a couple of days absolutely terrified in and out of my OB and the high risk clinic. I did make a brief post about the situation to keep my friends and family in the loop just saying that we were having medical complications from C and that I could use some prayers. It was a very emotional time and then I got a message. I'm including the words but not the emojis because ugh. The Hun said, hey girl, I saw your announcement. Congratulations. You said, thank you. We're so excited. She said, I noticed those cute little footies are rainbow colored. Did you have a miscarriage? You said, yes, I've had a few. It's been tough. She said, yeah, sometimes that happens when we don't take care of ourselves. You've definitely put on some pounds the last few years. Who says that? Like MLM aside, okay, what decent human being makes an unsolicited backhanded comment about somebody's weight? When they have just finished telling you that you have been struggling with your health and miscarriages for the past few years, like where is the human decency? I don't even care that she's in an MLM. That is wrong. At this point, I was not about to respond, but don't worry, she managed to make it worse. Great, great, can't wait to see. Then she said, it's never too late to start though. You don't want your weight to cause trouble this time around. (laughs) 
oh my God, like I said, I'm laughing so I don't cry. If she only knew, right? If she only knew how you were struggling with your weight and your health in the past and how that has impacted your previous pregnancies, what is wrong with people? And then she went into her MLM pitch. I think it was It Works. One of those ones with the shakes and the teas and garbage. I don't remember for sure. I don't care. I was busy throwing things and shouting. I didn't really read it closely. I do not blame you. I feel like that not only use my deepest pain as a selling tool, but also use the potential death of my unborn baby. I was angry, but also so shaken. I had an emergency consult with my doctor and a few emergency counseling sessions. And by the way, though it's still rocky, I am still pregnant and hoping to stay that way for six more weeks. I am deeply hoping for that as well. Also, I'm not even eating lunch meat or taking over the count painkillers or drinking herbal teas with hibiscus. You think I'm gonna risk your unregulated cleanse bullshit? I did not sign up. I did, however, block her. I'm gonna cover this next sentence. It's a little bit graphic. Sorry for the language. I'm very upset, hurt, scared, embarrassed, and sad. I don't blame you in the slightest. It is sick and twisted. The lengths that people in MLMs will go just to sell something. And I hate, I hate, hate that this is not the first time I've seen this. Like your story said, you already saw another example of something similar in a previous horror stories video. And that makes me sad. <laughs> like how sad is that, that I'm not surprised. This is not the way that it should be. And I do feel that it's my responsibility to continually reiterate that this is not appropriate behavior. That person is in the wrong. You did not deserve that. It's horrendous. It's cruel. It's inhumane. But with all of that being said, I appreciate your vulnerability in being willing to share this story because I'm sure that's really difficult, but it's stories like this that really drive home that point that sometimes there are no boundaries or limits or places that MLM reps won't go just to make a quick buck. And that says a lot more about the industry than it does about that individual person. I want to make that clear too. People who are in MLMs are just doing anything in their power to make any kind of money. And when money is so hard to come by in these businesses that there are people out there making these kinds of comments to people to try and sell something, we've got an issue. <laughs> yes, shame on her for saying that to you, but also shame on these companies, shame on the industry. Because if people were actually paid and people were actually compensated their worth, we would not be having this discussion right now. These videos would not exist. Again, I appreciate you taking the time to send this to me. I am so sorry this happened to you and I am wishing you all the best with this pregnancy. I'm looking at the calendar and your due date is approaching soon and I want nothing but the best for you and for that baby. This story says, hi Hannah, I saw my optometrist yesterday and I was telling her that I noticed I was having problems reading small print, such as ingredient labels. That led into a conversation about why I was reading ingredient labels. And I explained that I try not to buy makeup products with talc and I limit what I buy with fragrance. This is when she pitched her MLM to me. Yes, my optometrist pitched her MLM. What the F? <laughs> she started talking about how this company she was a part of had clean, fragrance-free products that were all created by doctors and chemical engineers. I wanted to roll my eyes, but as she was staring at them at that moment, I decided not to. I asked her what the company was. She hesitated a moment and then told me it was Luminous, but was quick to say that you couldn't buy these products in the store or online. Then I asked if they were cruelty-free and she quickly changed the subject. I looked up the company when I got home and I had a good laugh. Luminous is part of the MLM Mana V, now called Jeunesse. About 10 years ago, I had a brush with this MLM that I quickly realized was part of a cult-like program in Dallas that looked a lot like Nexium. My acquaintance, who I thought was my friend at the time, was outright nagging me to join both the MLM and this networking slash mindset program. One afternoon on the internet was all it took for me to realize I didn't want to be a part of either. I quickly severed ties with this person when she refused to take no for an answer, which makes me sad because she was quite a lot of fun when she wasn't droning on about either of these programs. Thanks for what you do because of the endless hours of anti-MLM content I consume, I quickly realized I was being pitched and was able to politely decline. And that's exactly the point of this story that I love. Short and sweet story, your optometrist pitched you, but what I love to hear is that conclusion that you were like, you know what? I consume a lot of this content. I was very aware as to what these companies are. I kind of know the warning signs. I kind of know the language. 
I was able to identify that in the moment and protect myself from joining. And I love that because knowledge is power, education is power. And that's truly what I feel like these videos are helping people do by sharing these experiences and seeing all the different settings in which these MLMs can creep in. I personally like to think that this is helping people to be able to protect themselves if they were to encounter any of these kinds of situations. So thank you for sending this story in. This story says, you can use my first name, all others have been changed. I worked in a nightclub in the late 90s and had made some good friends in the process. I was thrilled when my friend Lisa got engaged to her boyfriend who happened to work with us as well. She announced that they were having an engagement party in a few weeks and I was invited and instructed to bring a plus one. I was single, but I had a huge crush on my ex boss, Brad, from the nine to five job I had just quit. So I called him and asked if he would like to go with me. I spent way too much money on a super cute outfit to wear. I bought a gift for Lisa and Jose and anxiously awaited the day of the party. Brad picked me up and we drove to the address Lisa had given me. It wasn't their apartment. It was a much bigger, trendy loft apartment in a gentrified downtown area. But I was excited and figured a family member or friend was hosting to provide more room. When Brad and I walked in, all of the furniture in the place was arranged to face one direction. So it was almost like there was going to be an audience facing the kitchen. I was so confused, as was Brad, but we just laughed because we were nervous on our first date and how bad could it be? It was an adventure, right? Everyone was standing in the kitchen and drinking and munching on hors d'oeuvres, so we joined them. About 30 minutes later, everything went downhill. That's because you just walked into an MLM pitch. Lisa ushered everyone into the living room, urging people to sit in the makeshift auditorium seating. She had borrowed folding chairs from somewhere in addition to the regular chairs and the sofa and love seat. It was awkward to say the least, but I was excited for whatever was coming. Honestly, I envied Lisa because she just seemed like she had her life together. And although it wasn't perfect, she was living a really cool story and was getting married and all of that. For context, I was a few weeks away from turning 21. So I was a bit impressionable. But then Lisa standing in front of us all started asking specific guests very weird questions like, hey, Bob, I noticed you were drinking the iced tea. Do you think it tastes good? And Sylvia, I couldn't help but notice that you were admiring the kitchen cabinets. They look really clean, huh? And they were responding with stammers and confused mumbles. All of the guests were looking at each other truly puzzled and wondering how much Lisa had to drink before we arrived. Turns out she was giving us all an Amway pitch, one of the oldest pyramid schemes in the book. And she had used her actual engagement as a reason to bring her friends and family together and try to sell them products for their home. I was mortified and just knew any chance I had with Brad was disappearing faster than Lisa's dignity. <laughs> Oh no, what a terrible first day. Oh my gosh. We politely stayed until the end of her pitch and snuck out while she was answering questions. I might add that Jose hadn't said a word all night. He was just cowering in the corner with a beer. He sheepishly waved to us as we walked by him to leave. As soon as the door closed behind us, Brad and I busted out laughing. He said he could tell that I was completely taken by surprise and didn't think that I was in on it. And we ended up dating for several years. All right, there you go. We even went to Lisa and Jose's wedding wedding. But Lisa and I had sort of drifted apart a bit after that engagement party. Soon after they got married, she quit the club and I never saw or heard from her again. Thank you, Miss Hannah, for fighting the good fight and informing people about the dangers of MLMs. I can't see how people are still getting roped into these scams, but I appreciate the work you're doing. Emphasizing the income disclosures is the best way to turn a hun, I think. Keep up the excellent work. What a great lighthearted story to end off on. What's really getting to me about this is that she straight up used her her engagement as her excuse to gather all of these people together so that she could pitch them a pyramid scheme. And that kind of makes me sad because for a lot of women, getting engaged is really exciting. Having a party is really exciting. You're so in love. Your wedding's on the calendar. You want all your loved ones to get together and celebrate that. And just like on that personal woman to woman level, I'm like, girl, you missed such a big opportunity there to really have a great event to celebrate you and your engagement and something that everyone could remember and enjoy being at but instead she straight up hijacked it herself and made everybody close to her uncomfortable in the process. That just makes me really sad for her because I have to assume this story is taking place in the 90s, right? I have to assume that she's probably still not with Amway today. And now she's having to live with the fact that she sabotaged her own engagement party to try and make a pyramid scheme work for her. And on one side, I can understand from her perspective at that time that that's what she was feeling she needed to do in that moment to be successful. But it breaks my heart that now I'm sure looking back on it, you can never 
never get that memory back. You can't go back and redo that. And I'm sure being an Amway was some kind of a blemish on this entire memory and this entire experience. And that's really heartbreaking, but it does make for kind of an entertaining story about how you thought you were going on this like cutesy first date with this guy you had a crush on and you unknowingly took him to an Amway pitch. That is kind of a lighthearted take on it. I hope you can look back on that and laugh now. And with that, my friends, that's all the stories I have for you for this horror stories video. And again, as I said at the beginning, thank you for being here. Thank you for sending me these stories. I couldn't be here doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.